Hi folks, this is Sue Bell from Market Domination Solutions, and we're here today with a ninja webinar, a foundational ninja webinar, to talk about gap analysis. So I am just going to jump right in. There's lots of different types of gap analysis. Gap analysis is kind of a catch-all phrase. You can talk about any kind of gap in your marketing or even in your business. There's, uh, as the the demonstrations here show there's market share gap analysis, there's sales gap analysis. It's basically looking at where you are to where you want to be. But the other way that you can look at it is where you are compared to where your competitors are. In other words, you know, that being perhaps where you want to be, where your goals are. So we're going to talk about a couple of different gap analysis today. We're going to look at um, social channel gap analysis and we're going to look at uh, content channel gap analysis and one of the things I like about gap analysis is that it's something that the average digital marketer and particularly SEO isn't going to talk about so so let's just jump in oh I need this open in another tab hang on I got a bunch of links I want to drop you guys let me get a little bit organized here that's what I should have been doing beforehand. Where, oh, where did my, there we go. I found it. Not so many tabs that we can't find it. All right, great. So I will drop you a link. Oh, look at that. The room filled up while I wasn't looking. That's awesome. Good to see all you guys. Um, let me drop a link to this first spreadsheet. So channel gap analysis from a content perspective. <clears throat> so, this basically walks you through the different aspects of a buying cycle, right? You've got the first part here, which is awareness, and that's when somebody finds out about you, perhaps when somebody just finds out about a product and they've got questions and they're looking for information. And then this is where the consideration is where they're developing a preference, right? They're, they're trying to decide on a brand. Persuasion is where you want to push them over that edge of, you know, deciding for you. And then obviously there's the actual purchase, which can be in a store, by phone, online. All right. So then down the side here, we've got the different ways that you can approach each aspect of the buying cycle. So you've got, you know, from the perspective of that initial awareness, they might find you offline, they might find you through a paid ad, um, and all different kinds of paid ads, right, whether it's Google or Facebook or whatever. They might find you through social, it might be a video, or it might be something viral, or it might just be a Facebook post that gets shared or whatever. There's the idea of branding, and I put SEO under branding because I feel like that's where it really belongs. SEO is not something that happens overnight. It's a long play, and um, and I think that when you see somebody ranking highly in the SERPs, it lends trust and credence to the brand as well as giving you the opportunity to find out more about what the product is so I, I stuck that into branding and then there's third party now this is like um, third party outreach as opposed to like third party social so what would come in here are interviews or content that you're placing on blogs that get a lot of traffic and that's different from a lot of the content marketing concepts because I see a lot of content marketing that's actually used for SEO purposes you're looking for the backlinks and in this particular case because we're in the awareness mode we're actually looking for content that's going to bring us traffic. So I have one of my clients and friends, long-term friends, who just recently came across a person. I'll have to get her information. He, she actually helps him um, get on interviews with other people who are either in his market or in a related market so that it expands his reach into other people's lists and it's been quite effective for him he's um it's put a lot of people into his pipeline and so i wanted to give you that idea because um, it's 
it's quite popular these days. There's a lot of folks out there who are looking to interview people. So, and, and I have to say, you know, my, my client is my, my friend, my client, he's, um, he's interesting to talk to. He's actually a software developer. Um, it, it's not like he comes at the market from any particularly unique perspective. It's not like he's necessarily got, um, a really fascinating story to tell. So that's an interesting thing that I think you guys should be aware of in terms of outreach. All right. So, um, so the next chunk is decision content, right? Where, uh, where an intended buyer is going from the consideration to the persuasion phase. And so things that play a part in here are going to be desktop or mobile site, a mobile app, which is maybe something that you don't think about too often in this particular phase, uh, brochures, PDFs, and then opt-in content, right? So that's um, like they've already given you their email address. If they're in the awareness phase, they might give you that um, the email address. And then the opt-in content is designed to be both kind of a consideration and a persuasion um, avenue. So then the next thing, you're going to want to remarket to these people, right? And remarket can come in the form of phone calls, live chats, email marketing, SMS, display and social media marketing, and obviously retargeting campaigns. So, so you want to make sure that whatever it is that you're doing up here, that you can get these guys into a pipeline so that you can do some follow up with them. And then, Finally, you've got the sales channel, right? Your checkout and all of those kinds of things. So that that's going to happen either on your website or in a store or by phone or possibly in an app, right? So the reason we've got all of this on a spreadsheet is just so that you can tick the boxes. It's not so that you can like try to completely outlay your social media campaign you, you can certainly put a link to where you've got your social media campaign so that if you want to look at this and use it as a jump off point to each aspect of your content design you can but basically you just want to look and make sure that every box that you want to use you've got a check mark in it so in other words you might not want to do anything with offline or your client might not want to do anything with offline and that's fine you just x the block out and don't use it but, you know, I would say that you want to consider, and I, and I would start small. That's the other thing. Um, start with one or two channels. Don't start by trying to dominate the world immediately. Domination is a thing that takes time. So you want to, like, highlight those things that you, the places where you want to start, and then make sure, you're right, you make sure that you're progressing as you go along. So this helps you on a couple of different ways, right? It helps you, it helps the client understand why this is going to take, you know, 12 months or 18 months to implement, depending on how big they want to go and what their budget is and all of those kinds of things. And it helps them also to see progress as you're moving along. So, all right. That's the basic concepts. Any questions besides the magic wand? Yeah, exactly. I'll have magic wands out by the end of summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> exactly. All right. So let's go on to the next one. Um, the next one is a social gap analysis. So this is a little bit more common. Oh, I have links for this too. Hang on. Um, so this is the link to the grid that we're actually looking f at here. Not actually part of my, um, of my battle plan. I'm borrowing somebody else's. And here is their link to how to fill it out. You can use their software as, um, as a means to grab this information, which I think is very useful. There are other places where you can, uh, other softwares out there that will get similar sorts of information, but I like the format and I didn't think that the price was exorbitant, so uh, not a, an affiliate link or anything, just passing that along. So anyway, let's look at channel gap analysis for a minute. The idea here, and I've I've taught this in certification before. Um, the idea here is to look across all of the social platforms and understand how big of a footprint your competitors have. 
because if you understand that going into the market, then you've got an idea of what you need to do in order to be able to compete. So you want to look at, you know, how many um, Facebook fans do they have? How big is their Facebook group? How often are they promoting? What percentage of their posts are promotional? All of that kind of good stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, so same kind of concept with Twitter. How often are they promoting? Are they promoting a couple times a week? Are they you know, posting? Are they, uh, are they posting like five times a day? What do you need to do to be able to have the same kind of footprint? And the other question that you want to ask is how important is that? So some of the software is going to try to tell you. I looked at two or three different pieces of software today. Um, and I went back and tried to look at some of the ones that I used a couple of years ago. And interestingly enough, they don't actually have this data anymore. One of them was Alexa. I think another one was HubSpot. And I couldn't see on their sales pages. I'm not subscribed to either one of them at the moment. But I couldn't see on their sales pages where they still even try to guesstimate this kind of information anymore. So, um, so some of the software will attempt to tell you what percentage of sales is coming from each one of these social platforms and unless you've got analytics it's completely a guess so I just want you to know take that information with a grain of salt that is just the size of Mount Rushmore um, but what you can see is how big of a splash they're making obviously if they're still spending time and energy over the long run in some place like Facebook then it's worth their while. They must be making an ROI, otherwise they would have cut it out. So that gives you an idea of whether or not you want to promote there. If you see that they haven't done anything in Twitter for quite a long time, then it's an indication that they weren't making any money in Twitter. So that kind of an idea is, um, is a good thing to keep in mind while you're filling out the form and taking a look at what it is that they're doing. That's why you got the active column here, right? All right, so I I just look at this. I, I don't see um, I don't see too many marketers talking about both of these things. However, what that does is it leads you to this idea of a content strategy. And this is a chart for B two B, and I didn't look to see exactly how new it is. I don't see a date on this. Um, but the idea is there's a whole bunch of people out there who do not have any kind. Of a realistic content strategy it's mud against the wall oh 2018 thank you and um, fascinating I still don't see it but that's okay um, oh bottom left yeah there we go all right so I would say the vast majority of people out there are throwing mud against a wall and hoping that something sticks they don't have a plan. They're not looking at specifically at what the competition is doing, and they're not tracking well. Oh, you know, that's an interesting thing. They're not tracking well what this is doing and how it's affecting everything. Let me just see if I – I want to show you guys something because I showed one of my JV partners this yesterday, and I was surprised that he had no – idea that it was available. So let me just see if I can get into analytics pretty quickly and show you a site that like my own or something like that that's not going to make too much difference. Um, maybe I can even just take a screenshot. Hang on. Two shakes of Williams tail. Alright. So yeah, let me do that. Um, All right, I think I have all of the – so here in analytics, you've got this little pull-down tab. And if you pull this down, you've got the opportunity to create a new annotation. And when you click on that, create new annotation, it brings up a set of boxes down below. It gives you the option to put in a date and to put in what it is you want to annotate. And then it'll show up here on the graph with a little a little thingy beside it, a little flag beside it. So what I do for my SEO and for my marketing, if you've got, this is particularly useful for, for content strategies 
um, when you've got when you're tracking goals, right? You can come in here and you can say, on this particular day, I either did this with SEO or I I started a new campaign or you know we we uh, we had an interview with so and so, and then you can see what happens both to your traffic and to your conversions from that particular perspective. If you're not tracking too many things, if you're not making too many changes, then you're going to be able to isolate what it is that's making a difference. All right. So content strategies. Content strategies as a whole, like it's kind of a big thing. Like it, it can seem overwhelming to try and figure out what a content strategy should be. So I have a few things, a few links that I will share with you all out of the um, all out of the battle plan that will help. Let me just see. In doing that, I kind of lost my tabs. One second. All right, here we are. So this particular sheet is the keyword worksheet. And for me, that's where everything starts, right? I'm looking at keywords. And I'm going to put in my keyword value, my pay-per-click value. Um, so I'm looking at a couple of different things. I'm looking here at the product on the profit. I'm looking, um, this thing will automatically convert out your keyword value for you. But I'm also looking, as I'm doing my keyword research, I'm also looking at cost per click. And a high cost per click is an indication of an end of buying cycle keyword. And a low cost per click is an indication of something early on in the buying cycle. So if we come back here a second to our gap analysis, you've got this column here, which is basically the information column. So these things would be the, the kinds of keywords that you want to target that are probably a low cost per click, whereas these areas in here are the kinds of things that you want to target with a higher cost per click. All right, and this this is basically the uh, the actual checkout pages. So I don't tend to to really have any keywords that I'm targeting in this sale in the, the actual sales area. I'm targeting keywords here. But the one thing that I do want to look at when I'm over here in this is how difficult is it to actually make a purchase, right? What's the friction in that? So that's that's the reason that I actually have a column over there. All right. Let's come back here for a second. All right, so that's the um, that's the keyword worksheet. The next thing I want to give you is um, 40 elements of a high converting sales page. So when you do get down to that sales page, I use this. I, I clear you what when I don't use this on a sales page, I regret it. I can tell the difference in the conversions. So that let me that went out. Yeah, 362. That is the link that goes directly to the 40 elements of a converting sales page. I think I have been down through this page before, but if I haven't, we'll do that on another webinar. It's a full hour webinar to go through all of those. There's psychological things and there's um, all kinds of fun stuff. And it takes the better part of an hour just to do that page all by itself. All right, the next one is grabbing the the traffic so you need clickable headlines pretty much for all three of the first columns you need clickable headlines um, so some of the things at the beginning you don't have control over because they're outreach but anything that you've got control over I would definitely look through um, those different psychological concepts that can be implemented you can use them everything from paid um, paid ads to lead magnets contents to interviews, the, the title of interviews, all that kind of good stuff. Oh, the other thing I have to say is you don't have to just be interviewed by other people. You can interview. You can actually interview other people or your clients can interview other people. Now, not everybody's comfortable doing that, but if you are comfortable doing that, that's another way that you can actually grab their list because if they're being interviewed by you, you can bet that they're going to put that interview out to their list, right? You, you let them have the link or they can even post it on their website and give you a link back. It will get you um, traffic there too. All right. 
The next one is content ideas because you, the whole thing needs content, right? The whole thing is driven around content. And I tell you what, if I've got um, a title, then the rest of it, for me, it flows pretty easily. So here's a list of blog content ideas. Like some of them are ways where you can get, um, you know, you can go find titles and others are pre-made titles where you can just insert your keywords and all up like given the fact that a lot of them are reusable in a lot of different ways um, there's easily a year's worth of content ideas there I, I think it's actually unlimited but easily a year's so so I'm just about I told you guys this was going to be quick um, any questions or comments? All right, then one last slide. I just want to let you guys know, if you didn't see the email, I have a promotion going on right now for affiliate business in a box. I've still got a couple slots left. Not too many, but I do have a couple of spots left. And so what this is, is we've taken, this is a done for you, this is a short promo, I promise. Um, we've taken all of the tedium out of creating an affiliate marketing business, right? We create the website, the products, the reviews, the videos, the traffic funnels, the lead capture, we do everything for you. If you're interested, there's the link, and you can check it out. Thoughts? Concepts about anything? Otherwise, I will let you guys go. Yes, very short and very sweet. Yeah, absolutely. There's, um, we've got five suggested um, themes, vertical themes on the sales page. If you want something other than that, talk to me. You can probably arrange something. Yep. All right. Hey, thanks, Armando. Okay, great. I'll let you guys go. Thanks a lot. We'll be back, I think, next week. Um, might be the week after next. Another uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Oh, do you guys know? Let me tell you one more thing before you go. Um, on the home page of the website, partners, I have – I'm trying to help everybody out. I have a list of all of the upcoming webinars so that you guys can know what's coming up. You can load more events so you can see further out. And um, and for the ones that are public, you can just click the Join Us and sign up. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next time. Ciao.